Through enduring hardships, the tears of pain I shed today will be the tears of joy I shed tomorrow. I am Coach MJD Tiger, Certified Life Coach and Mentor. Through passion and purpose, aiding those through the valleys, over the mountains, and conquering the volcanoes of life. While free, yet connected to everything, every place, and every person around us, we can obtain a life of freedom and wellness through passion and purpose. There is no end. You are here now. And if no one has told you this today, I love you. You deserve to hear that. Salute to you all. The brave never fall. Learn, laugh, and level up. How are you feeling? Take a moment to do a self check in for yourself. Do this every morning, throughout the day as needed, and every night before you close your eyes for sleep. Ask yourself how are you feeling mentally? How are you feeling emotionally? How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling spiritually? And all, how do you feel in your mind? How do you feel in your body? How do you feel in your heart? And how do you feel in your soul? Balancing yourself is a healthy daily practice that will reliably keep you in harmony with your entire mind, body, heart, and soul. Take these next few moments of meditation in silence to answer those very questions. How are you feeling? Something to think about every day, every single day. Fear, mistrust in yourself, doubt, limited beliefs. These are things that you have to rid yourself of every single day. And it may have to be a reset button every single day. That reset button is trust. And that button is powered by self-love and self-respect you have for yourself. Everything that you fear, everything that is, you, you believe is holding you back, everything that you think is going wrong. There's always another way. There's always a different point. And sometimes we're going too fast. We got to slow down, sometimes even stop. The goal is just not to go backwards. It's to go forwards. We can only do that by trusting ourselves to know we can get over fear and obstacles, limited beliefs, and the stories we tell ourselves each day that we can't do it. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. Yes, we do. That is something to think about every single day, every single moment. You do, you can, you will. There is no should, there is no try, just do it. Be patient with yourself, love yourself, be grateful for what you have and forgive yourself and keep moving forward. You are stronger than what you are giving yourself credit for. Trust yourself. You are, episode six, you are jettisoning all toxicity from your life. Toxicity is almost one of those words like narcissism. It could be defined many different ways, but really what it comes down to is how each individual interprets their version of what toxicity is, narcissism, even empathy when it comes to other people. Empaths and narcissists both suffer from 
well, I shouldn't say suffered. They both have that stigma attached where empathy is good, narcissism bad. But toxicity can be applied to both columns. Toxicity can be negative within an empath. You can have an empath who is too empathic. And they're a detriment to themselves and those around them. They become negative, therefore toxic in their empathy. And certainly with narcissism, you can become toxic when we go to those extremes in both of those areas. The question is, why is it important? Why is toxicity such a buzzword? Why is toxicity, why is the word toxic in itself present? But just like any other word, it's just a word. What really matters is, what are you feeling when you are in a certain place or you're interacting with a certain individual or you have something in your life that is causing you negative emotions, anxiety, depression, making your thoughts contradict what your heart feels like, you have a hard time making decisions, you feel like you regret everything you do, you're afraid to make a decision based on the fact that the decisions you've made in the past have all had outcomes that have led you to negative, dark, shadowy areas in your life. And living in the past and having those emotions boiling up inside of us often can make us all feel anxiety. There's no one who can run away from that shit. We're all a victim of our past, if you want to look at it that way. Or we are all thrivers of our past. We've all learned from our past, one way or the other. Regardless of what we did in it, we can learn from it. We can learn how not to do something that we did in the past, or we can learn how to build upon something great that we did in the past. But the key to moving forward is not only what you're taking from the past and what you're going to do in the future, is that you are here now in the moment, and in this moment, In order to have a clear mind, clear thoughts, and rational decision-making, you have to jettison all toxicity from your life. You have to be open and honest about what that toxicity is. Boundaries are huge when it comes to identifying what should be jettisoned, who should be jettisoned, and where should be jettisoned. And it's not always easy turmoil will boil up inside of you as I said before because the anxiety comes in now you have to make a decision and unfortunately all our decisions that we make aren't always right they don't always lead to positive outcomes sometimes the choices we make boldly and we trust ourselves and we know this is the way to go turns out to be the wrong decision altogether we were so off base so wrong about that decision that we made that it frightens us and it fills us with anxiety to put ourselves in that position again. Now we're living in a fearful state. And the worst part about it is now we don't trust ourselves. We have to identify what is toxic in our lives based only on what we know for ourselves are healthy boundaries, as we talked about in previous episodes. The healthier our boundaries the easier it is to see those red flags. And I talked about this in other podcasts where you can look at, if we use people, if you're in a relationship with someone or if you've been in a relationship with someone for 10 years, there are still red flags there because people are growing. They may not have had a red flag in certain areas when you met them, but all of a sudden those flags that were green are now starting to fade to red. And as thresholds, we we can say, okay, red, you know, this particular flag i am not going to tolerate that then you have the yellow one it's like i i can kind of deal with that you know i I would prefer they weren't like this but you know i we can't be so controlling that we push everyone away from our lives because no one's perfect and then you have the green flags where it's like i'm aligned with that that's great that's awesome that's a plus but it's always easy to be when someone has a giant green flag We don't learn anything from those because those are the easy flags to identify. The hard flags to identify is the yellow and the reds. 
especially the red flags. Because often people don't want to show what those flags are. Or they want to they don't want to tell the complete truth of how that flag was constructed and how big it actually is. They want to show you a fragment of the flag. They'll they'll pull it a little bit out of the bag and say, see, there's a flag in here. It's kind of red, but we won't say how big it is. And it's important as human beings when we're growing that clarity is is just extremely important. How can we grow without clarity? In order to have clarity, you have to be void of distractions. To be void of distractions, you have to be void of drama, stress, worry, doubt, mistrust. Not only in ourselves, but the people, places, and things that are in our lives that we consider to be essential. I always say when you strip all that quote-unquote essential people, places, and things away, and it's just you... How essential are you to yourself? And if you feel like you're not essential to yourself, it doesn't matter what the people, places, the things are doing as far as toxicity, because if you haven't figured out what's essential for yourself and balance yourself out and be able to create your own joy, happiness, and peace, you're toxic to your own well-being. You are your own villain. We want to be the hero that gets rid of the villain within ourselves so we can be an asset to those around us. There's nothing worse than talking to someone who thinks they have it all figured out within themselves and it comes off as very arrogant and and pompous and full of hubris. I'd be the first one to raise my hand and say, as a coach, the last thing I would ever say to anyone is I have it all figured out. That would make me a horrible coach. I don't know shit. I'm continuing to learn. I know what I've learned through experience and I've read and I've got my my certifications, but there's always room to add more and grow. I talked about this in the previous episodes about the clay. Yes, you have molded yourself into a clay pot, but there's always more room to grow onto it. But if you try to break it, it will shatter. Once it's hardened, that clay pot will shatter in a hundred pieces. Can't take away from it. It's hardened. And hopefully what it hardened into, you have something that is useful and purposeful that it hardened into. And it wasn't just a piece of junk sitting in the corner, collected mothballs and spider webs and dust. Getting rid of things, people and places in your life that don't serve you. And I mean truly don't serve you. I'm not talking about us wanting perfection out of every person, place, or thing, because that's OCD category. No one is perfect. No place is perfect. No thing is perfect. They will always have flaws. And the more time you spend with those things, you will see those flaws. Everything seems more perfect when you first meet them. That's why relationships, when you first meet someone, it's important that you understand that that is not the true person you're with. That is a, that is just a, the first few steps into the the room or the the auditorium of someone's life. There's much more going on, and it's going to take a while for you to walk around every corner of, quote-unquote, the auditorium of someone's life before you finally sit down and have a seat and say, this is a good seat, I, I want to see this show. <laughs> That's just a weird way of putting it, but it's true. How do we know who, what, or where is toxic upon first meeting said person place or thing we don't know that's where the word experience comes into place we don't know but we for damn sure can come to the table with something to prepare ourselves with we can come in with our armor we can come in with our communication we can come in with our experience our morals our values our principles our purpose our passion our motivation all the things that we are we bring that to the table and that gives us a good start because we're not so afraid of what can come at us because we can spot the red flags a mile away. Spotting them is one thing. Having the courage to do something about it is a completely separate issue. It doesn't take courage to jettison those who you feel are completely discardable, excuse me, discardable in the first place. 
if it's easy to discard of something, it really didn't mean anything. It had no value to you in the first place. If you look at something in a room that you're in or something in your house, everything has value. It's much easier to throw away something that has no value to you, even if it's expensive, than it's something that does have value to you and it was, you know, worth nothing. But within that thing that worth nothing is something that you value. Now, I always say in relationships, investment for investment, value for value, you don't discard people who are valuable to you. You don't discard things that are valuable to you. You don't discard places that are valuable to you. You only discard those things that are not valuable to you. That's what most people do. And what is the point? Why should we discard someone, someplace, something? Why jettison these things? That is for each individual to figure out for themselves. I know for myself, it's about simplicity and joy and peace and harmony with those people, places, and things around me. Trust and effort and value in these things not on my end, but what am I getting from these things? And if it's not purposeful, if it's not passionate, if it's not respectful, if it doesn't serve me, then why am I wasting my time? But life is complicated. We don't always get to pick and choose who, where, and when, and how all these things come into place. We are but just mere vessels in this world trying to make the best of it that we can. It's easy to trust others when we trust ourselves. If we don't trust ourselves, we can't trust others. If we can't trust that we can handle being at a certain place and doing what it takes in that place, you know, even if it's a work environment, if it's a church or it's a family function or whatever, if we don't trust that we can get through it, what happens? Negative things happen. That's their anxiety, the fear, the doubt. Limited beliefs, self-limitations, lack of boundaries, lack of self-respect, lack of self-control, lack of self-esteem, lack of presence in this world through purpose. Ridding ourselves of what we don't need that brings negativity to our life, I feel is essential. Unfortunately, the door swings both ways. And I think that's what frightens people because we get into a place where we know we can jettison what we don't need, but we could also be the thing that someone else doesn't need. And that can be a scary thought because if we can justify jettison someone that means it can happen to us. Life is about balance. But that goes back to control. We can't control what other people do. Nor can they control us if we don't allow them to. There's plenty of people out there who are controlled verbally, mentally, emotionally, physically by other people. But that internal struggle within themselves to allow that to happen is the problem. They will never get to the point where they would jettison these toxic people from their lives because they don't have the strength, the courage, the fortitude, the experience, the self-respect, the self-control, the self-love for themselves to actually rid themselves of something that is draining the life out of them like a vampire. The whole process is not about quick, impulsive, or I should say lack of impulse control action. And a lot of people I've talked to believe when I came up with the concept of jettison a person, a place, or a thing that doesn't serve you, that it's a quick process and it's not. And there's a difference between jettison for good and being patient and understanding enough with someone where you can detach it and step back and say, I think you need more time. I think this place... I need to figure out more about this place. I think this thing that I have doesn't serve me. But when it goes to people, because you know, obviously, if you jettison a place or a thing, that's much easier to do than 
when you jettison a person. But I would like to say that I've always liked to say that when you jettison a person, there has to be things in place before that act that makes sense positively in, in, in a healthy way. Otherwise, you just become a very toxic person. You don't jettison every single person you meet because they made one mistake or two mistakes. There is forgiveness in there. Empathy, patience, understanding. And these things is what makes us better human beings because we aren't impulsive. The better of the human beings out here in this world, through history and even up to now, don't have impulse control issues. And I think that's one thing that all of us as human beings struggle with is trying to have enough self-control not to be impulsive. And that's the reason why a lot of couples and a lot of co-workers and a lot of any relationships have a hard time communicating because that impulse control, the I got to say the next word, I have to get my point across right now, as opposed to just waiting 30 minutes or 30 seconds to get your point across. If your point is good enough to make, you're willing to wait for it to make it. It's about respect. And again, it's not just for respect externally, it's respect internally, the self-respect for yourself. Just think about this. There are people out there who struggle to have conversations with themselves. We all have had that happen. You are in conflict through a bad situation, a trauma, a failure, a setback, a disappointment. And we get in our heads and we can hear those voices and they're telling us stories and we're having a hard time communicating with our own selves. And that is a huge problem. That's when we're throwing up red flags for ourselves. That's when we have to jettison things within ourselves. But that comes from trust. That comes from knowing. That comes from what do I want? And not everyone out there has the strength to tell themselves you fucked up and you need to fix this ASAP because that goes back to when we jettison and we're trying to get rid of toxic things in our lives sometimes we'll believe certain things are more toxic than they actually are well really it's just a learning tool it's a learning place it's a learning person something someone some place is teaching us something is teaching us we're just not listening. And that's where that clarity comes in. We have to have that foundation of clarity. You have to be balanced out enough to understand what's going on around you, to be able to interpret all the signals and all the things that are going on around you in your life. The true definition of who you are, what, how does that stack up against the people, places, and things in your world, in your reality? We all have our own reality. Unfortunately, we all are guilty of placing fantasies on said realities. It's real easy to get into a relationship and put fantasy on top of the reality of that relationship. It's looking one way, but you're stacking something on top of it that isn't real. We all fall guilty of that. Identifying toxicity, major, major toxicity. And this is very important to me. I knew when I had my awakening and I wanted to better myself, I knew I had to identify what is really not going to work for me in my life, in all phases, mind, body, heart, and soul. What's really going to work for me? At this workplace does this workplace really fit all of my needs all my standards does this relationship fit all my needs all my standards does this place but that's not where it stops you have to also ask yourself what are you contributing I always ask people this question what do you have to offer anyone any place or anything but we'll, we'll stick on anyone 
What do you have to offer anyone that other people can't offer that person themselves? What makes you unique enough as an individual that you can do something for someone, be a presence and a positive person in their life? What can you contribute to another person's life that they can't get from anyone else? That is how you find your purpose. That's how you find your voice. You have to ask yourself, what can I do that is unique unto me, that makes me the unicorn of my universe? And I bring this to the table no matter who I'm talking to, no matter what place I go, no matter what I have. I bring this to the table and nobody else can do this but me. I'm the only person who can do this one thing and it's a positive thing, it's a healthy thing, it's something that will make another person's life easier. And for me, it was always my ability to help and try to, to do all that I can in a respectful enough manner as I possibly can to make other people's lives easier, to lift the burdens from them, to soften the blow from them, to get them through one more day, one more hour. What can I do to help? What can I do to help? I'm not gonna kill myself over it. I'm not gonna put it over what I need to get done, but it's something that I can contribute that most people wouldn't, and that is my unique take on helping. Which is why the brave number fall, excuse me, the brave number fall exists in the first place. Only I can do the brave number fall, and we all have one of these things. And what I mean by that, it means meaning we all have something to contribute in a unique way. It may not be completely different, but it's unique to us, and we're adding on to it what is already in place around us. We're just making sure we're not the weak link. In order to do that, you have to jettison all toxicity from your life. When I had my awakening and I knew I wanted to better myself in every facet of my life, mind, body, heart, and soul, I knew every single bit of toxic things in my life had to go away as fast as possible. The brave never fall is only a thing because I did that. I reduced myself down to an atom is what I call it. I just reduced myself down to a singularity. And I said, I'm going to start right here as if I was just born today. I don't know anything. I'm going to grow my life from this moment. And I am still on that track. But the only way I could do that is I had to jettison all toxicity from my life. Every toxic person, every toxic thing, every toxic place, I had to make a change. And the only way you can do that is through knowing who you are, being genuine and trusting yourself, doing unto others as you would have others doing unto you, investing into others as much as you want them to invest into you. Those are the things that makes a quality person valuable or invaluable it is not a game it is not a joke the power we have to change other people's lives in a positive way to contribute is real the impact we all have through our own unique abilities is real but in order for those things to stick out all the drama, the negativity, the limited belief people, those who don't trust themselves, those who are not healthy, those who take no accountability, no ownership. They have no place in the life of someone with true purpose. It's unfortunate. It sounds bad, but it's the truth. It is extremely important that all that drama, all that noise, all that negativity is not in our life when we're seeking and fulfilling and answering the call of our purpose. And if no one has told you this today, I love you. You deserve to hear that. Salute to you all. The brave never fall. 
learn, laugh, and level up.